there is no replacement for displacement. Have you heard that before? So um, I've been sitting here working on some video stuff. I've been dark for a little while. If you've seen all the stuff going on in the government, I have, let's just say I do a little work for the government and things have been a bit disruptive lately. So I've been busy, but I'm working on, here's some footage that I have here of the uh, 2025 essay. Uh, it's just beautiful. And um, I'm working on a very long video to help you make a decision about what boat you want to buy for this season. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that. And we're going to talk about this. But that video is taking me a while to edit because it's going to be about 30 minutes long. It's a bit longer. It's a podcast type format. But I wanted to take a minute to uh, talk to you about something that um, I've been kind of putting together and that I've noticed about displacement. So uh, even though we could probably watch video of uh, the essay like this all day long, let's take a look at the spreadsheet that I made. What we have here is this spreadsheet I put together. And this actually took me a, quite some time. Um, I had to go through all of the different brands and uh, you know all of the various trims of boats. And I made, uh, there's uh, three trims here. We have, there's the ultra luxury, like you know the Paragon and there's a, a Malibu in there and there's a, the new T ultra uh, ZX by Taiga would fall into that category. Basically really expensive, uh, really nice boats. And then we have the normal luxury, like Natik and Centurion and uh, uh, Supra. And then we have some uh, value boats like uh, Moomba and the NXT for Mastercraft um, and so forth. So uh, I want to go over some things in here uh, to show you. So the first thing I'm going to do is it's kind of hard when you look at all of them together. And I, the, what I did here is I have them grouped by size. So they're not sorted because you see we start at the top with the 23s. And then we go down to the 20, there's some 25s and the 24s and then 22s. I just kind of grouped them this way because it's the way I like looking at them because you know, the 23 is really the sweet spot. Um, okay, so let, let's filter down and let's start, let's just look at luxury and ultra luxury. So, you know, we know which boats make really good waves out there. You know, the Centurions, the Supra, the, 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 the Natik, especially the Paragon. Um, and it's interesting when you look at this because the Paragon makes a, a better wave than the the G23. Um, and so when you when you look at that, you can see here, um, yeah, that's like 1,500 pounds more ballast. So the the, the Teague G23 for 2025 has 250 more pounds of ballast than last year, and the the Paragon is 11,450. That's a fat boy. So um, with stock ballast and the weight of the boat, it's a fat boy. And you can see where all that weight comes from. It's the weight of the boat. Um, the weight of the boat in 2024 is 6,000 pounds uh, for the regular Natik and 7,750 for the Paragon. So um, there's a lot of stuff in that boat. Makes it nice and heavy. And you can see the difference here. But you can really get an idea of what's going on. Let's look at a couple more. So we have the Centurion RI. 230, 10,900 pounds, the Super SL, 10,450. So you, you really get an idea that the boats that, that make the bigger waves, the, the nice waves, are displacing um, more weight. Now, the only thing I would add to this is we've talked about this before, that where that weight is, is very important. For instance, and I'm not trying to pick on them, but like Centurions really like that bow up. And one of the things I found is they might say, okay, we have 5,400 pounds of ballast, but let's say a thousand pounds of that or more is in the bow, center to the bow. But that boat likes to ride bow up. So you have to let all that water out and you have to add lead to the back. So that um, makes it that this isn't quite apples to apples, but that's an, that's a, an observation that I've seen on the water. So, but you can see by displacement, um, you know, you get an idea of how much lead that you're going to need. And the SL is, uh, I think, going to be updated this year. So um, when it's updated in, uh, or the, the coming year. And so when that's updated, um, it should have more ballast because you can look, if we look at, let's say, let's look at the Super SE, which was done in 23. And that went from 
and this is uh, it's got 11,450 and I think in 23 it was like 108 so it's gained a lot of weight there and you can see the super SC at 24 um, 0.5 feet so almost 25 feet it's definitely a fat boy it's basically the same weight as the um, as the 2025 Paragon although that boat is a little bit smaller and we can look at the RI 245 here and we can look at the Mastercraft X24 and you can see that it's got about a thousand pounds less and I can tell you um, my experience with the Natik and, and with the Supra is that the the weight is in the right place so when you fill it all up it's gonna make a pretty dang good wave um, and I like that and then you can also look at the um, the Mastercrafts um, some of these you can just see they're they're kind of anemic you know they're, they're very low especially um, when we get to the value ones um, but this gives you a good idea for looking at the boats like okay well which boats am I gonna have to add a lot of lead to well this doesn't tell you everything like when I mentioned with that Centurion part but this gives you a really good idea so uh, what else do we have here like um, uh, let's see we can look at here's a good one the Super SV so we're down here in the 21 22 foot range and if you look at the Super SV it's 10,000 pounds displacement and you know the one closest to it is the G21 on 8550 that's why that SV doesn't need any lead either okay it's got a ton of lead I mean it's got a ton of, of ballast and it's all in the right place and it just makes a great wave okay and let's look at the let's look at the 22s we got here okay and um, there's the Super SA look at that difference 10,550 with stock ballast and like I said I just I showed you when we started this video that wave there's no lead in there and the weight the ballast is in the right place where it makes a great wave the pitch and the roll are just about perfect so look at that it's 950 more than last year okay and you can see this across the line now now let's let's bring the um, the value boats that I'll take off the ultra luxury and let's bring those in here and what do we see so like for instance here's the 23s again so let's let's highlight the 23s and where do we see anemic boats? Uh, so the Mastercraft NXT, it's anemic. And the Mastercraft XT23, 8600. So you can see right there, they if they want to compete uh, or not tell you that you have to buy a 1,000 pounds or more of lead, I mean, you're going to need a lot of lead in these boats if you're going to compete with the other stuff we have here. The Malibu 23X, 23 MXV is 10,500 pounds. The Super SL is 10,450 the uh, Centurion RI 230 is 10,900 so you can see right here uh, the the G23 9900 so you get an idea okay if you know which boats make really good waves and don't need a lot of lead you can compare them to the others you're gonna get a really good idea right here okay let's let's take a look at um, oh there's a couple other uh, I missed two other 23s down here we have the Axis that's 10180 that's pretty good but the Z3 that's pretty anemic you know, it's not quite as bad as Mastercraft, but it's pretty anemic. Okay, so then we can go down here and um, let's look at the 24. So that's a 25. So let's go. Eh, these are 24 and 25s, I guess. So let's go look down here. Um, well, there's a lot of them here. Um, but let's see what we have. So that's the Centurion uh, 245, RI 245, 11350. The Super SC is 11450 okay that's that's the boat that we have that thing's a bad boy now ours is a little bit less because we have the 23 so um you know it would be even better we have about six seven hundred pounds of lead in there we'd probably only need 400 and we we do that with only three people so you can see that's one of the reasons that boat makes a lot now remember weight isn't everything you know you got to have a good haul you got to have a good surf system all those things but displacement makes all the difference in the world by the amount of you know uh, if all things are equal more displacement means more push um so let's keep looking down now we have the new boats okay let's look at the moomba tycon right here ten thousand six hundred pounds for a 24 foot boat you look at the other 24s 
Um, the X24 is 10400. The NXT24 anemic at 83. Let's see. We have um, the ATX24 8910, also pretty darn anemic. So there you go. You can see which boats you're going to need to throw your a lot of storage away and add a bunch of lead and carry that around. So uh, it's good to see here. Okay, so let's look at the 22s. Um, and this is one of the reasons you're going to see here why the new Mumba Max and the Tycon are so amazing. So here's the Mumba Max 22. 10,200 pounds. 1,700 more pounds than it had last year. Okay. Um, I already, we already talked about the Super SA, I think. But look at that. 10,550. All right. That's why they don't need any lead. And that's why this Mumba Max is such a great value. The Mumba Craze, that's pretty close. But you can tell you're going to need some... You're going to need some lead if you want to compete with the Max. And then the Tycon was up here at 10,600 and the Makai at 10,000. That's why, that's why the Tycon makes a better wave than the Makai un unless you add lead to the Makai. Just something to think about. And again, you can see, where's the anemic ones? The Mastercraft, uh, pretty low on the X-22, but really bad on the NXT. That, that, that boat's going to need a lot of lead to make a decent wave. And then again, ATX, um, very anemic. Okay. And lastly, we look at the 21s. And this again, this is where you see that Super SV. Look at that. 10,000 pounds there, well, 9,900 pounds. Doesn't need any lead. And it's in, um, it's in the right spot. So this spreadsheet is available at wake9.com slash displacement. And there's a link in the... Uh, description but feel free to take a look at this filter it yourself make a copy do whatever you want and if you find any mistakes please tell me I really um, spent a lot of time to make sure I compiled this correctly and then I added some notes that you know some of these ones it's like with the optional plug-and-play supplemental whatever so anyway I'm gonna finish up that other video it uh, um, it's going to be about 30 minutes long. It goes through the surf systems. It goes through some of our history. It goes through all the different boats. Anyway, I think you're really going to enjoy it. But I wanted to give you this just to um, give you a little taste. Anyway, um, looking forward to a great summer. I hope you are too.